Our gardens are full of life and doing a bug hunt is a fantastic way of finding out what tiny creatures call your garden home. It's a great activity to do with children and you don't have to be an insect expert to do a bug hunt, especially as we've made the Beginner's Guide to Bug Hunting, where we're going to show you the top 10 UK mini beasts that you can find in your garden, based on what we find in our garden today. Number one, wood lice. All you have to do is lift up a plant pot, a stone or a piece of wood and you will find a wood louse. Wood lice are not actually insects, they're crustaceans, which means they're more closely related to crabs and lobsters. Different people in different parts of the UK have different local names for wood lice, including cheesy bugs, cheese logs, wood pigs and monkey peas. Number two, spiders. Gardens are full of tiny habitats and there's at least one species of spider to suit each one. Long grass, short grass, mossy rocks, fences, walls and compost heaps, the list is endless and one garden can host over a hundred species of spider. But you shouldn't let that frighten you. Spiders are not as scary as people think and they're a really important part of the garden ecosystem. Number three, worms. In my hand is one of the most important animals on the planet, earthworms. There are 27 species of earthworm in the UK and they are the protectors and creators of healthy soil, keeping it healthy and full of oxygen and nutrients. One garden like this can have thousands of worms underground. And some people think that if you chop an earthworm in half, it makes two worms, but that's just a myth. It actually just makes one very unhappy worm. A bit like this one just freaking out. Number four, earwigs. Earwigs are nocturnal, which means they come out at night time. They also have a pair of wings, but you rarely see them flying. And they also make surprisingly good mothers. They lay 30 to 50 eggs and they look after them all through the winter. Then when they hatch out, the mother continues to look after them until they can fend for themselves. Lots of people think that earwigs burrow into your ears and into your brain, but luckily that's just an old wives tale. Number five, ladybirds. Before ladybirds become the ladybirds that we know and love, they go through an amazing transformation. Just in the way that caterpillars turn into butterflies, ladybirds also have a larval stage, which looks positively alien-like in appearance. Both the larvae and the adult ladybird can eat a hundred aphids in one day, making them a fantastic pest control for gardeners. They're brightly coloured to warn predators that they don't taste nice, and when they feel threatened, they produce reflex blood from their knee joints, which is bitter tasting, and that puts off any predators trying to eat them. Number six, ants. Black garden ants live in big social colonies in lawns, soils and under rocks. In July and August, male and female ants with wings emerge from their nests and fly into the sky to mate with each other. Then the males die and the females shed their wings before looking for a new nesting site. Generally all the nests in one area will erupt with flying ants at the same time, creating quite the wildlife spectacle in your garden. Number seven, slugs and snails. Slugs and snails are hermaphrodites, which means they have both male and female reproductive cells. They only come out when it's warm and wet. In dry, cold winter months, slugs will bury themselves deep underground and snails will hibernate inside their shells, sealing off the entrance for months at a time. Although they are slimy and often seen as a pest by gardeners, they're a very important food source for hedgehogs and birds, and they are completely harmless to humans. Number eight, beetles. There are 4,000 species of beetle in the UK and 300,000 of them worldwide. They come in all different sizes, shapes and colors, and they're a fantastic pollinator, as well as a good food source for lots of different creatures. The biggest one in the UK is the stag beetle, which reaches a whopping eight centimeters long. Some beetles are vegetarians, whereas others prey on smaller insects, and some are scavengers, eating dead animals that they find. Number nine, butterflies. 
Butterflies are indicators of a healthy environment, so it's a great sign if you've got them in your garden. As well as being beautiful, they're really important pollinators for plants, and they have fascinating life cycles, going from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to adult butterfly. Some species even migrate across the globe as well, like the painted lady, which can travel thousands of miles across the planet. Number 10, moths. Moths are in the same family as butterflies, which is called Lepidoptera. Although moths are somewhat underappreciated compared to their butterfly relatives, but they can be really, really stunning. They're probably one of my favorite garden insects. And a really good way to find out what moths are using your garden is to set up a moth trap. They're very simple to make. You just need a box, lots of egg cartons, and a light, and it will attract the moths. And it doesn't harm the moths at all. And you can leave it out in the evening and then come back in the morning and see what you've found. So all those bugs were found in just one day in this one garden and there's still so much that we haven't covered like bees, wasps, millipedes, centipedes and flies. If you'd like to learn more about mini beasts and how you can help them in your garden then take a look at the links below. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn more about the mini beasts in your garden.